witam wszystkich serdecznie, mieli z tej strony, witajcie w kolejnym wywiadzie z deweloperem Heroes of the Storm. Um, dzisiaj będziemy rozmawiali po angielsku, napisy są gdzieś u dołu. So, um, hello, my guest today is Kyle Milker, he's a lead developer for Heroes of the Storm. Hello. Hi, nice to actually see you this time, because we, yeah. didn't, see <laughs> <laughs> we didn't see each other last time. Um, last time we talked was during the alpha, I think it was a closed alpha, now it's... The game is released and uh, we have the eternal conflict coming in a few days. It's, it's, it's exciting, exciting times, yes. yes. The, the game, game is real, it's, it's out, out there. there. Let's, Let's do, do this. this. Yeah, so <laughs> I've got a few questions. The first one is, uh, how long does it take to create like a new map, like the Battlefields of Eternity for the eternal conflict? Yeah, that's, that's a, it's a, a very involved, involved process. process. So, so it's, it's actually a multi-month month process and, and it varies battleground, battleground to battleground depending, depending on what's going on with them. them. Um, so, 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 so just, just to kind of walk you through quickly the, the process, It all starts out with paper designs where we're really just kind of um, brainstorming, kind of coming up with the mechanic for the battleground. We really want each battleground to be very unique and we want them to also provide variety in, in the gameplay. Now, I, I kind of always use the example of Sky Temple versus Tomb of the Spider Queen. Sky Temple is a really big map. It uh, has shrines that spawn that push you apart because you need to either, you know, you need to spread out and capture more than one at a time. And because the map is so big, it's really difficult to like, uh, to get, get around and space yourself out, where Tomb of the Spider Queen is a really small map. The lanes are very close together. You see a lot more people going in and out of lane. You see gank squads a lot more often because it's so small. So when you queue up and you play those maps back to back, uh, you know, your, your gameplay experience changes really dramatically. The way you play, the heroes you play, um, the, the choices you make with talents, the composition choices, all that stuff is dramatically impacted by the battleground. So we really think about Uh, how do we introduce new battlegrounds that add a new layers of, of variety and, and, and make the game more dynamic by the, the choices and opportunities they provide? So that, that paper design period is all about figuring out those ideas. Like what, 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 what should we do with this battleground that's new and unique and that actually contributes positively to the, the overall landscape of the game? Um, once we have a, like a, an agreement, and it's usually like kind of a group of people who are reviewing that and kind of iterating on it after a couple weeks of that process, We come to a point where we say, let's prototype this. And we're, we're super lucky that we have uh, a tool set that we've been using uh, to make StarCraft II for many years. Um, and it's continually getting updated. And we have a lot more new features specific to Heroes. But we're able to stand up a prototype of, that, of a battleground within a week or two. So we can be playing it. Like as soon as we figure out that's a good idea, we can be playing it the next week, which is fantastic. So um, we enter that prototype stage. And that is, again, that's, that's many, many weeks of First, the designers playing it, and they play multiple times a week. And each time they play, they meet afterwards, and they they just throw out a whole bunch of ideas and critiques and uh, bug fixes, and they're just basically very rapidly iterating on it. And the per the people in charge of the battleground will then take that feedback and immediately that day go and implement it all. And then the next day they have a new they have a new play test, and they do the same process. They rinse and repeat that over a couple weeks, and the design team gets to a point where they feel really comfortable with the prototype. At that point, we move it out to prototype uh, playtesting with the whole team. And um, our team is both working on Heroes of the Storm and StarCraft II. So there's a couple hundred people here who then, um, large portions of them play it during that, that playtesting phase. And over many weeks, uh, we refine it to the point that we all agree that this battleground is, is a, doing a good thing and it's heading in the right direction. And once we kind of come out on the other side of that process, we're able to uh, kind of go into full production where we unleash the, our massive art team uh, and our level designers and tech designers to actually take that prototype map and turn it into the real map that you see. So end to end, this process can take any way, anywhere from uh, four to six months. Um, the Eternal Conflict, uh, the Battlefield of Eternity map that we're introducing in that, is actually way more involved than anything we've ever done before because we actually made two completely unique tile sets on it. There's a heaven side and a hell side. There's two completely new sets of minions. There's new sets of mercenaries. So that one was even more involved. Uh, but we think it was really important to us to bring Diablo into the game in a really big way and, and do everything we could to kind of uh, interpret or reinterpret Diablo's things into Heroes of the Storm. And the team had so much fun doing that. And it's kind of just the beginning of, I think, our opportunity to bring Blizzard Worlds into Heroes of the Storm. You said that you have those tools to, that help you create the new maps. Um, will you be releasing the to those tools like in StarCraft 2, there's the Galaxy Editor? It's going to be the same with yeah. the Heroes? Yeah, it is definitely our intention at some point to release uh, an editor for Heroes of the Storm and allow people to create their own battlegrounds and, uh, and custom maps and then publish them. We already have a custom map section in the game, but it's, it's really just for people to be able to organize their own games. But uh, in time, we would like to do that. Our focus um, the last couple of years has been on just standing up the core game and gameplay and trying to prepare it for play. 
but uh, we definitely intend to go and, and, uh, and get ourselves in a position to release the tool set as well. I don't have any kind of timeline for that right now, um, but it's something we're really excited about. This whole genre really came out of Blizzard players making these games in games like Warcraft 3 and the original StarCraft. Like Defense of the Ancients is a Warcraft 3 map made by our community. You know, These things are, um, it's pretty cool to think about the possibilities of once we put the tools back into the community's hands for this game, what kind of amazing things are they going to come up with? So we're excited about it. It's just a little bit, a little bit on the horizon based on where we are today. So I understand you said the few months it takes to take great new map. So probably the next event like general conflict will be in half a year or something like that? Uh, no. So, so one thing is, um, you know, we work on things like I, I mentioned at our eternal conflict event that we're working on heroes and content today that isn't even going to come into the game until mid to late next year. So we're, okay. you know, we, we front load a lot of this work. And so there's a lot of things we're being actively working on that we're not talking about that, um, that will come into the game. So, so no guarantees on the timeline for when the next event like that happens, but it's definitely something that we're going to be watching this very closely. We thought it was fun to kind of do this summer of Diablo and, and bring in um, multiple battlegrounds, multiple heroes, skins, mounts, all these things, and kind of just invite the world of Diablo into heroes. So we're going to try that out. We'll see how that feels. Maybe that feels amazing and, and, and it's as cool as we think it is. Maybe we go, hey, that's kind of a lot of Diablo. Maybe we should have mixed it up a yeah. little bit and brought other stuff in too. Uh, like so we'll just watch about... that as we go and, and kind of make a make the decision on what the right timing is for something like that. I would like to ask for more StarCraft 2 probably. I mean, something like... Actually, I'm, I'm a StarCraft 2 caster player by heart and uh, we want something new from StarCraft. My community would like something like that. Def as Definitely. We hear you. I think, I mean, I think what you're seeing is initially, you know, our team, again, we made StarCraft 2. So everyone was looking for just something different. So it was exciting to go off and make Warcraft heroes and, and, uh, and, and worlds that didn't look like StarCraft just because we've been working on StarCraft 2 for so long. But uh, the intention is definitely to be circling around and, and giving much more equal representation to all of our IPs and all of our game worlds. So you could definitely expect more StarCraft. We totally know that we don't have a StarCraft warrior. We don't have a StarCraft support character. Um, we, yeah. we will address that <laughs> in time here. We have and I, I hear you. I, I love StarCraft too. Like <laughs> I, 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 I spent a, a large chunk of my life working on StarCraft. I, I, love, I love the game. I love the world. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited to bring it to Heroes as well. Uh, we have two new um, heroes for the, um, for the internal conflict. It's going to be Butcher and the Leroyc. It's uh, Will they come the same day or it's going to be two weeks apart? They're, they're spread out. Um, the exact timing we haven't said. So Butcher goes live uh, on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, um, the 30th of June, when um, when the when the first phase of Eternal Conflict really starts. Um, the Orc will come out after that, and we actually we in our Internal Conflict trailer, you probably saw the monk in there as well. Yes, so I there's did. there's at least three heroes that are in this in this pipeline here that you're going to be seeing. Um, and I, I mentioned at our at our event too, where we first unveiled unveiled this that. Our goal is also to kind of accelerate um, the frequency with which heroes come into the game. So we just hit a period of time where we had like six weeks between um, the Lost Vikings and Sylvanas, and then it was like seven weeks between Sylvanas and Kael'thas. That's way too long. We don't want it to be that long. I think um, three to four weeks is probably a much more reasonable time frame for how often we'll bring new heroes in. So um, we're, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll see how it feels as they come in across the rest of the year here, and that will um, inform what we, what we do with our cadence moving forward. I would like to talk about a few technical things about the game client. Um, first, uh, the first thing I want to actually ask you is, um, uh, would there be more observer slots in the game? Because I'm a caster, getting into games is really hard. Like, um, there are a few tournaments I would like to cover, but uh, every time it's, okay, there's going to be a clean feed. I don't like clean feed, my viewers don't like clean feed. Only two, sp two spots in the lobby, it's, w we need more. That I, I totally hear you here. This is something that we are actively talking about and, and trying to figure out a timeline for how we can address it. Um, this is definitely a limitation of the number of player slots we have in the game and the, and the fact that there are so many um, more active players than we had in a game like StarCraft II. Uh, so it's, it is totally on our radar. We hear you and we're going to be working on it. I don't have a timeline for it, so I apologize that it's not something that we can just turn around instantaneously, but it's definitely something that we're going to be working on and uh, we'll kind of see what what kind of options we have to, to expand that. And it may be a phase thing where initially we get a little bit more support and then maybe in time there's something that's much larger and, and more of like what we would all ultimately like to have. Uh, when can we mm, expect to have a faster reconnection op option? Because right now it takes it's faster than it used to be, but sometimes yeah. it takes even five minutes to join the game again. 
right? So, so the common case of disconnect is like the momentary disconnect where your, your client doesn't close down. And, and the support we have today is much better for that case because what we're doing is we're, we're doing a game save at, at intervals that are, I think, about every minute or so right now, which means the most time you'll have to wait if you, in that scenario is, is the amount of time it takes to, um, to simulate from where your last save point was to where the game is today. So a momentary disconnect, it helps immensely. If you crash out completely or your computer blue screens or something and it's a multi-minute process for you to get back, that, that then takes the entire distance from the last save point to where the game is right now. And depending on your connection speed and depending on your computer performance, that can be a very painful process. So we're totally aware of that. We would like to move to a system that has um, saves that are going up at greater intervals and are probably not local to your system, but are more on Battle.net so that you're just downloading the save from there, which will help, again, shorten that, that amount of time even more dramatically. It's, it's sort of, again, something that's on our radar. We hear, we hear the pleas on this. One thing that um, well, I will say that is it's, a, it's actually, it's not a super high occurrence rate for people. It's like a very small fraction of people, but we totally understand that for the people that it happens to, that it's very impactful. So we care about it, we're working on it, and I hope to have improvements on it in the game in, in an upcoming patch here. Um, okay, the next question I got is um, about, will there be an option just to join uh, our friends and watch their playing like a quick, uh, quick match and join them and watch how they play without delay? Yeah, so so support for that, that's actually, that sounds like an awesome feature and I've seen other games that do that and it's and it's it's great and I certainly, I have that experience quite often where I log into the game and a friend of mine is in the middle of their game and I'm in that mode where I'm like, oh, I have to wait 10 minutes. I wish I could just jump in and watch them. Uh, so that would definitely be a cool thing to add. It's, it's tied very closely on the tech side to the number of player slots we have today um, outside of if we introduced another mechanism to kind of relay um, like replays or game, game state. So, uh, I think it will be part of a big package of things that we would be working on alongside one another. At the same time, we were providing additional player slots for, for things like observers. We would be um, offering some mechanism to kind of spectate a, in a better way uh, for a live game. So again, I don't have a timeline on it. it. It's it is a very cool thing that we all know about and care about and want to do. Uh, it's just a question of how soon we can get to it. Um, will we will we see uh, clans and groups uh, like in StarCraft too? Uh, I'm, interested in, I'm interested in groups because uh, I understand clans should be sometime shown in game, but groups uh, having like a group of 50 people just to join the same chat, being able to communicate with each other, like in StarCraft 2. Yeah, we have. Um, we definitely have a lot of plans for for clans and groups. So we're kind of ch changing the format of it, but that general idea that you can find. Um, smaller groups of people that are like-minded that you, you choose to interact with that can be, like you said, a, a chat group that you, you pull from, a group of people that you are doing, like looking for group sessions within this small subset of people that you've already kind of pre-screened and you know they're, are your kind of people. Uh, clans is usually a much bigger idea as we're, as we're currently exploring it, where there's a much bigger group of people that are interacting with each other, um, finding games, making teams, competing against other clans. So that is all stuff. Um, we actually mentioned it at BlizzCon last year, so it's a it's a big up and coming feature that we're we're talking about and working on. I don't have a timeline for it, but I think this is a game that really wants that. I, you know, it's the kind of game where you really need to be able to pull from from people that are like you that you want to play the game with. So I think it's going to be really important, and it's something that we want to do and we want to do right. Uh, so you can be looking out for more information on it as we get closer to when it will be coming into the game. Mm, after the game launched, we have seen a um, big rise in toxicity with toxic players. Uh, are you planning somehow to f fight it just to encourage the nice players? Something like, um, I don't know, some kind of rewards and just give a <coughs> like to the peop person who's okay with you during the game? Sure. So, so there's, a, there's no like one right answer for this, yeah. this problem. I think this is an ongoing thing that we fully recognize and we have uh, groups of people who I think are going to be spending considerable amounts of time perpetually working on this problem. Um, one, one thing uh, that I will say that is kind of unique to Heroes is that where in other games we have the idea of like the carry and that there could be one person who really makes or breaks the game for you. In Heroes of the Storm, it's so team-based that you really need everybody to kind of be on the same page. Um, and so while, the, the, yes, we have this huge influx of new players now and along with them come people who are just inherently kind of jerks and are, are not are not really used to being in an environment where they are, are needing to co coordinate and cooperate with other people. Um, what they're very quickly going to find is they do not win games when they do that. <laughs> so uh, 
it's it's a weird it's a weird thing I think when you come from a game uh, from another game where you're like, hey, I'm the guy, I'm going to do everything, and everyone else, uh, you know, I don't need them. Like you need them, you need everybody. And and the second you start being negative and you start yelling at people or talking about someone and how bad of a job they're doing, everything falls apart and you're going to lose the game. Um, so I, on one hand, I think there's this there's going to be this moment of realization for each of those people where they go. I just lose this game all the time. And maybe they blame that on, oh, it's everybody else's fault. But the ones who actually realize the, the nature of the game and the team aspect, I think they will start embracing that fact of like, okay, we got to just do this together and we can, we, we can succeed. And if I, don't, if I stop yelling at everybody for just a moment, we might actually accomplish something together. So that's, that's one aspect of it that is kind of intangible. And it's not something that we can very easily like relay to people. But I think the more people who play the game and recognize it, the more that spreads in them. You know, the more the that communal aspect of this game of like, we are a team, let's do this, the more, the more that um, becomes imp important to them along the way. The other side of that is there's lots of things we can do also to both punish people who are doing the bad things. And we have things in the game today that do that. Uh, we also have new um, detection mechanisms coming in that will do things like auto silencing players uh, who are just negative, right? Like if they are consistently being negative, they're just going to lose the ability to talk to other players in the game other than their friends for periods of time. And so I think that will start poking them and being like, dude, you're you're not being nice. Like, <laughs> stop doing that. Um, the reward side of it too, I think, is really important. We definitely want to introduce things like um, you know honor systems, things that are kind of reinforcing like you're being nice, you're you're a good person, and guess what, you're winning more because you're a good person. So this is a package of things that um, that I think collectively and incrementally, as we do more and more of them, will help level that up. And I, I've already definitely seen there's a, a big chunk of our community today that has already recognized a lot of these things, and they try to breed that mentality in other people. And I think where they have success with it. Um, is is that win right? That moment where you just say, "Hey, it's okay. Let's try this. Let's go. Let's go do this Merc camp right now, or let's let's uh, let's stop team fighting because we can't handle it right now." And and they have that moment of realization where it's like, "We have another option. It's not to yell at each other. It's to band together." So uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a weird thing. And again, it, it's an ongoing thing, but it's important. <laughs> Okay, and I got just one. I think I have time. We have time. I'm just for one more question, and it's gonna be: uh, What are we an option just to ban maps we don't want to play? Because the next map is gonna make there will be a lot of maps. Some people don't like uh, one of them. <coughs> they don't want to play. They want to ban the map. Would you are you planning to do something like that? So, so we're we went this direction of having multiple battlegrounds because of what we'd learned from from games like StarCraft and WarCraft Three, um, where. You know, each each different map in those games and the variety of maps meant that there was a lot more strategic depth and options in the game. So we value that tremendously on Heroes, and we we took the learnings from StarCraft and we brought it into Heroes of the Storm. So uh, I think we totally understand that people say, "Oh, this map again. I don't want to play this map." But but our value is that not everyone feels that way, and that for some people that map is like, "Yes, I got that map. All right, let's do this. And I get to play my hero who is who's valuable on this map or has a role to play on it." Um, so we don't want to eliminate that. We don't want to create this world where we just go, you know what, because 43% of the people said that they dislike this map, they're never going to play it again. What we'd rather do is introduce a, a map rotation system that's similar to what we have seasonally in games like StarCraft II, where we take a subset of our full pool of, full pool of battlegrounds, and, and that is on rotation. And unlike StarCraft II, where we do that seasonally, for Heroes, the idea is we want to do this like weekly. So every week, we'll take a group of maps out of our full map pool and those are the ones you're going to play on when you quick match or, or play ranked play. And then the next week, we're going to mix that up and new maps will come in, some maps will go out, but it'll just be some variety there. So even if there's a map that you just hate and you don't want to play, the, the frequency with which you get it will be much less. Um, and we think that that is a good approach to this because it allows us to maintain the variety that is so important to us without basically killing maps that are not... It's not that they're bad. I, I totally understand that certain people dislike certain maps, but they need to understand that it's not a universal thing, right? So we want to keep we want to keep that variety in there. So we're gonna we're gonna be adding that in an upcoming patch. We'll try it out. We'll see how it feels. Um, I think that in the tournament system, the systems they have today, where um, where the teams get to pick the next battleground that they play on, I think that's a good way of at least giving them some direction. And I think sometimes too, when we when we value adaptability as much as we do in this game, sometimes it's okay to like play on a map that you think is you're not good on because th then you need to start exploring new ways to play so you can get good on it. Uh, okay. But yeah, that's how we are on, on, on map rotations and stuff right now. Okay. Thank you, Rob. That's all the time I think we have. Um, thank you for, for the interview. Mm, well, I, I, le I learned a few new things and I hope we'll, uh, we'll be able to talk again in when Starcamp 
we'll go have a StarCraft 2 event. Definitely. Yeah, yes, thank so. you so much. It was great talking to you again. Thank you. Bye. Right. Take care. Bye. A, dobra, jako że ja już się ośmieszyłem całkowicie e, w tym momencie moją angielszczyzną, e, przy okazji e, po co się zajść, no to mówię z Kamilkar, miałem pytań całą masę multu. Mogę wam powiedzieć, że pracuję jeszcze na czymś takim jak audio czaty, ale no to się nie chciałem pytać, bo już wiem, że na czymś takim pracują. Chciałem się zapytać o banowanie bohaterów Hero League i Team League, no ale widzieliście ile czasu tutaj miałem. Parę ciekawych rzeczy się dowiedzieliśmy. Dowiedzieliśmy się, że... Będziemy mieli te eventy różne, następne 4 miesiące stworzenie nowej mapy, czekam na te sprawy, czekam na to aż pojawi się ten edytor map, to będzie świetne. Zrobimy Aram, wszyscy środkiem i każdy będzie grał abaturem, 5, 10 abaturów przeciwko sobie, a byłoby coś pięknego. Dobra, wielkie dzięki za uwagę, napisy są albo dopiero je wrzucam, może wrzuciłem jakiś dziwny ten filmik. Jakbym wrzucił go i nie znaleźlibyście napisów, to napiszcie mi, ale myślę, że to zrobię. Pozdrawiam Was też również oczywiście kod, który próbował mnie tutaj harasować. Zapraszam do subskrypcji mojego kanału, do, tam są gdzieś informacje wszystkie. Do usłyszenia, do zobaczenia, do następnego razu. Cześć!